Welcome back to MMA Oddsbreaker. This week we got uh, Brett Johns coming on. Titan Fighting Championships, Championships 33. Will Watson's opponent, March 20th in Alabama. Um, as most of you know at home, I start, you know, I have a conversation before we actually start recording. And Brett mentioned something. Uh, he was with Cage Warrior Fighting Championships. Uh, um, and Graham Boylan was the CEO. He stepped down from the program over there. Uh, a lot of the fighters are allowed to fight elsewhere for one fight, but not for a bunch of fights. You finished your contract with uh, Cage Warriors and decided to sign with Titan. And the reason you said the reason why you chose Titan because you have to have UFC vets on your record to be able to make it to the UFC. Uh, do you see being in Titan now one of those things? Obviously, your opponent, Whale Watson, is going to a big step up as far as named competition. Do you see Titan being that that way for you to make to make the UFC really pay attention to you? Um, definitely. You know, uh, I, th I think... If you look at any of the fights on that card, you know, you've got, you got Pat Healy, he's fighting for the, the lightweight title. You've got, like, John Madsen was in tough, the heavyweight tough, I, I remember. Um, I think I think Chase Gormley was, was was on the card as well a few times. There's good guys in, 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 in Titan, you know. Like, Cage Warriors, they kind of, kind of lack that American sort of the good American quality guys and good American quality fighters. So when, all, when, we, when we got the call from my management company to say that Titan were interested in signing... I was all for it, you know. They're they're a good company, and um, they were offering me these UFC names. I'm I'm going to jump for the chance, you know. You, I personally think, for an outside point of view, you need these UFC like um, UFC names in your record before you start jumping into the UFC. You know, it's one thing getting to the UFC, but it's even harder staying there. So if you start beating UFC veterans occasionally, you start beating them every fight. I feel like I'll, I'll make a good career in the UFC then. If if the UFC came calling, say June of 2013, you had just beat James McAllister and said, "Hey, we want you to come over and fight for the UFC." That's about four or five fights ago for you. W would you have jumped at that point to the UFC and, and taken the risk to jump over? No, I was. Uh, I, I wasn't experienced enough, and even uh, even being undefeated back then, you know, uh, I, obviously you were there that fight. I remember you. Uh, I remember you uh, commenting that fight. Yeah. It, it, was, it was one of my best performances to date, you know. Um, it, it was a good win, I found. It was one of my first legitimate knockouts on my record, my first, one, of my, one of my first TKOs on the record. I still felt like I was lacking in skill, you know. And I, I, it's been, I think it's been another three or four fights since then. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel like I'm getting better. Now you ask me the question, yeah, maybe I went over a while now, then maybe the chance will come again. And then maybe I'll say yes, but... It's one of the moments that when they ask me, I'll kind of think about it and then say yes or no. But like I said, getting to the UFC is hard. Staying in the UFC is harder. And even fighting that, fighting that top level is just super hard. I've noticed with a lot of the European fighters, you, I asked a lot of the European fighters that, that same question, and they all say at a certain point in their career, either they're undefeated or doing very well, that, that they're not ready. They're, they're just, if the UFC came calling, we'd have to tell them no right now and have a couple more fights to be able to get ready to get in. American fighters, we ask them the same question. Canadians, I should say North Americans, we ask Canadians fighters the same thing. Yes, I'm, I'm ready, ready to go to the UFC. And it's like, for some reason, the mentality in America is get there as fast as possible. And the mentality in Europe is stay in as, fa as long as possible. Is that something that you and your management team sits down and talks about? Is like, you're not ready yet, let's just hold back a little bit? Or is it something that you just know on your own? Is it something that's kind of given to you as a kid that your parents have kind of drawn it into you? Um, it's, it's, it's real. I've only signed my, my management company for about um, four or five months. Uh, they, they basically have helped me a lot. Um, it's, it's Brian Butler and his company, uh, Sucker Punch Entertainment. They've been absolutely oh, brilliant. Yeah. But they've they've seen what said straight away. They've said, um, you know, after maybe after a few fights in Titan, we'll go straight to the UFC. But speaking of my coach about it, and he's absolutely happy with that as well. You know, um, but back back like like McAllister yeah. time. Or maybe you take it take it forward after the even after the world title win. But I did oh, yeah. a tournament, uh, two fights in one night, yeah. and won a world title. I didn't think I was ready then. If the UFC had called then, I think my coach would have said no. You know, we just, you know, I, I want to. My, my aim in this goal, I, I I love fighting. I, it's just it's yeah. just it's just it's pure, and that's why I like the sport. It's just so pure. But I want to make a living from this. Like the guys don't know, I have been. I've got. I've had no money for about a year now, Frank. I've had. I've had nothing. I've lived off the bomb. I've had to sell my car. You know, I've been living from house to house to house to house, sleeping on couches. It's a sacrifice that you you need to do to, to get well. So yeah, I want to make the right choices to stay in the UFC as long as possible and to get the more money I can. You know. 
I had no idea that you were with uh, Sucker Punch and Brian Butler. Um, Brian, of course, has Felice Herrig and, and Carlos Barza and a bunch of other fighters as well that are doing very well in the UFC. And Brian is actually one of my favorite managers. Um, it's interesting that your new management team with Brian and Sucker Punch is one of my favorite management groups. And then you're fighting for Lex McMahon and Alchemist who run Titan, which is also one of my other favorite guys. So it's funny that both guys that you're working with are in, in this, in this world of MMA, there are a yeah. bunch of shady, slimy assholes that are managers. I mean, they're just complete dickheads and they will ruin a fighter's career. Absolutely ruin it. And if, if the, if they had managed you when you beat McAllister and the UFC called, they would have pushed you up because they want the yeah. money. These yeah. guys tend not to alchemist with Nima and Lex and, and Brian uh, over at, uh, at Sucker Punch. They tend to slow fighters down. And it frustrates them sometimes because they want them to stay in a lot longer. Uh, you're with a great management team. And when you get that phone call, you'll be ready because they'll know you're ready. Your coach will know you're ready. You'll be able to go and, and make a long run of it. But you also know the steps to get there. And that first step for you right now is Will Watson. He's the guy that's in front of you. Knowing the name... It's a, na it's a bigger name to fighter than you fought in the past. So this is a bigger name. Not saying competition-wise is any different, but just the name that goes with it. The pressure of now being on, a, on major TV, CBS Sports here in America, uh, being broke, living on couches, not having a car any longer. What's the pressure, the personal pressure? What's it like for you? Have you been putting more on you, or has it been kind of the same? Um, it, it, for, for me, it, it's kind of a make and break now. You know, it's It's... Yeah. I need this win. And like I've said this, I've, I've had five amateur fights undefeated, I've had ten pro fights undefeated, and I've said this every single time. I need this win. But now it, it, it's stronger than ever. I generally do need this win. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to be up, I'm going to be up my ass. You know, I, I'm not going to be able to do nothing. I have to go back to work. And, so I, I need this win. And um, beating a name like, like YL, you know, he's an experienced veteran. Like I said, I, I speak highly of him all the time. You know, to, to fight anybody that fights in the UFC, whether they're one fight veteran or a ten fight veteran, they should have the respect. They fought at the top level there, yeah. and that's what I'm giving them. Give them that respect. You know, I'm I'm more afraid of him. I fought some hard. I fought some nasty looking guys, but to to win against a name like you said, like a yeah. name, it kind of puts that stamp on your record. You know, um, you you you've had plenty of them names in your record, but for me, like coming from a country which isn't really known for MMA. You know, I'm lacking them names. So to be with Titan and to have YL on there, it's going to be a great start. Let's talk about let's talk about Wales real quick. It, it's a small country in the UK. It's not really known. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of the UK people pick on Wales. Like it's like the the running joke. That everyone's always picking on the Welsh. It's always that. I do it constantly all the time as well. When I was fighting John Phillips, he's well. He's a Welshman. I was picking on you know. Oh, he's just a Welshman. Like who really cares? Still scary as hell. He scared the crap out of me, but it's still you know it's a tough thing. How how is fighting? How is MMA in in Wales? It's it's it seems like living on the other side of the pond. It seems like it's very difficult to find a good training camp, a good coach, and good training partners because there's not the mass of people that are fighting over there in, in training in MMA. Do you find that to be true? Definitely. When you look at them. Um... I, I fought Welsh, I fought in the Welsh Judo squad for years, and um, there's there was a girl. There was a situation because obviously Wales is a part of the UK. When they go to the Olympics, it's known as GBR, Great Britain. Right. And um, we had a judo girl here called Natalie Power, and she's absolutely fantastic. She actually just won the gold medal in the Commonwealth Games okay. back in Scotland. Um, but years ago, when the Olympics was getting, they were choosing the squad. They, they chose a girl called Gemma Gibbons, who eventually won the silver medal in the Olympics. But three weeks before the Olympics, Natalie Powell had beaten this girl fair and square you know in, in training she, she she dominated her but the team didn't choose her because, I feel like it was because she was Welsh so in Wales I feel like we are like the last people to get chosen we are we are that you know you don't get chosen if you're from Wales unless you're special right. but like I've MMA is different you keep beating people you're eventually going to get you and that's how I've gone in my career I've got I've got to keep winning fights to get where I want to go like the, like you hear a lot of stuff in the English fighters, you hear a lot on them doing so well, and maybe the Scottish fighters. It's gone absolutely crazy for Conor McGregor, you know? Yeah. But he's one of them guys who has made his way there, and, I, and I'm doing exactly the same. And I don't care if, 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 if I'm on some rankings in 12th place. You know, in my mind, I, I'm, I'm the best in the UK at Batman. End up. I'm the best in Europe. End up. I feel like now we need to get to the States now and prove to them how good I am. I think I looked at um, Fight Matrix. It's the only record I really go by. 
uh, the ranking, sorry, it's only rankings I go by. And I'm the top, um, I'm the top uh, a rank, uh, European rank fighter yeah. in the world. The only people that are above me are Japanese, Brazilians, and Americans. And that's why I'm coming to the States. I'm, sure I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to get better again. Do you, do you use that chip on your shoulder sometimes when you're, when you're fighting that, you know, the, the Welsh do kind of as a, as a whole? And, and it did, we're talking about, for a lot of people at home, they don't, they don't understand. Americans don't really follow geopolitical politics and how things work in other countries and how it's like, you know, the UK is, is a mass of several different countries. It's not just England. So there's a lot of countries that are over there and there's a different way of how each country gets handled. Obviously, with Conor McGregor, Ireland has been jumped on the map. Everybody that's in his group in Dublin, everyone's getting fights, you know, getting better fights, whether they're getting moved to the UFC or getting moved up the rankings in their own and getting more money because of Conor. Uh, do you sometimes keep that, that, that Welsh chip on your shoulder, that little... A little anger that hey sometimes you know this is this is my shot this is my way to kind of bring up bring everybody up at one time. Yeah, I I I I, I say on other interviews you know they go um they go so you know how do you feel about coming to America? I said look, the guys who are over in America or Canada, I said, you you've got your Irish guys, you've got your Conor McGregor's, your Carthel Pendreds, you've got your Scottish guys, you've got your your Robert Whiteford, your Joanne Calderwoods, you've got your English guys, you've got your Bisbins, you've got your Ross Pearsons, you've got no Welsh guys. You have no Welsh guys at all, yeah. and I'm the man for the job. And I, 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 I'm telling you, I'm the man for the job. You know, yeah. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to cause some noise. I'm not going to be disrespectful. I'm not a disrespectful person. You, any my my past interviews, I, I never slag nobody off. It's not, it's not what I do. I'll just do what I got to do on the night. I train for myself. I don't, people go, oh, you know, he's good at jiu jitsu. Are you, are you going to practice defend? I'm not practicing defense. No, nothing. I, my defense is solid over the years of training I've done. I practice what I got to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And another thing as well, it's when it's, it's the equivalent. I feel like when 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 sometimes like outside countries say, you know, oh, someone's American. They say, oh, are you, oh, are you from Canada? It's like, well, no, I'm from America. It's the same over here. Like, I, I, I'm guaranteed I'm going to go to America. And they go, oh, yeah, I think you're from England. And I'm going to be like, whoa, no, 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 no. It's uh, I'm Welsh. I've made the mistake before. Like I've done it before. It happens a lot with me for some reason. I spend a lot of time, obviously, in, in England and London. Um, now that I'm working, uh, doing more commenting for Bama, that I kind of understand the differences in the in the, um, the the accents and the the speech patterns over there. But if I'm if I'm talking to somebody from Australia or from New Zealand, I have to ask because I've I've made the mistake. You know, are you an Aussie? Like, no, I'm a Kiwi. Like, and like they get mad, like they want to fight. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm I'm, an, I'm just dumb American. I don't know the difference. I'm sorry. And so it's it's got to be frustrating to, to come over to America and be like. Oh, you're, 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 are you English? Are you, you know, you have red hair, so you must be Irish. Like, it's like, that's our mentality. It's how we think. And you're like, no, I'm Welsh. Like, it's, what don't you understand? And we just don't get it. We just don't get the accents. We don't understand the differences and how things work. We just don't understand it. It's just how we're, how we're raised. To be honest, I think I get mixed up with uh, the Australians and the, the New Zealands as well. So that's not, a, that's an easy mistake, that is. <laughs> good. I'm glad. That's one hook I'm off. That's good. <laughs> well, let's talk about Well. You, you talk about, you have a lot of respect for him. You, you obviously talked about Conor McGregor and how explosive he has become. It's because he's, he has the Muhammad Ali style of speech where he tells you he's going to knock you out in the second round and he damn near beats you to death in the second round. He tells you he's going to knock out the best guy in the world. He knocks him out in the first round and beats him down. I mean, this is just what he does. He talks about it. He hypes it up, and then he does it. So people are really gravitating to him. That's not your style. Your style is, is more like very respectful, very, very quiet. You're not scared of any man. You're giving every man the respect they're due, but you're going to beat him with an inch of their life because that's what you have to do to get off the couch. What do you see with Whale? Like, how do you see this fight breaking down with Watson? It's going to be a, kind of a different fight than you've been in before. Yeah, definitely. Um, I look back. I look back at my my past records. Um, I got Brum on my record. Who's a, who's a stocky, like short, stocky wrestler sort of guy with some good heavy hands. But Callister was a stand up guy. I fought a, a, an absolutely amazing guy from Sweden called David Hagstrom. Uh, another stand up guy. These are all stand up guys. And uh, my fights have always like I've always tried taking it to the floor. Somehow I got a good um, good wrestling background for MMA. I was telling one of the wrestlers that comes trains with me, he goes, oh, you, you know, you should train wrestling. I said, I'm an absolute terrible freestyle wrestler. It wasn't, I, I said, I wasn't really a, a really good judoka. You know, I got to Welsh, Welsh squad level, which isn't really high. Um, but it seems to work together brilliantly in MMA. Basically, it's like a similar sort of thing to GSP. You know, he was, a, he was an absolutely awesome MMA wrestler, but, you know, he wasn't the best wrestler in the world for freestyle wrestling. Right. And I feel like it's the, it's the equivalent for me. 
Um, that's well, that's what's happened my last couple of fights. I've I've, I've wrestled a lot of guys. Uh, with Yael, you know, he works. He's working a lot with Eddie Bravo, but that's not something like I, I'm not standing across the cage to Eddie Bravo. I'm standing across the cage to Yael Watson. I, I fight. I'm training with one of um, my teammate Ashley Williams. He's uh, he's the top three in the world at um, brown belt, 68 kilos, oh, uh, yeah. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I, I train with them every day. Um, and I'm getting good. I've recently just been awarded my Pearl Belt and Jiu-Jitsu, so I'm happy with that as well. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, I'm not I'm not sure, really. It's one of them things I'm going to have to feel it out. You know, if he comes out the gate and he's going to swing lefts and rights, then I'm, then I'm going to take him down. If he comes out, he's relaxed, and you feel like it's more of a stand-up fight, then I'm going to stand up. That's probably been my weakness in the past, is the stand-up. You know, I have a lot of um, I have a lot of hate from the fans. Sometimes I can be kind of boring. But um, this fight is going to be completely uh, different. Well, GSP spent the last year and a half, two years, some even say four years of his career before he retired, being boring but winning. And there is a, there is a way that you got to be a crowd favorite to make the fans want to pay attention to you and make them want to come buy seats and buy tickets and, and buy your T-shirts. But there is a point to where being undefeated and being boring is much better. You know, being 20-0 is much better than being 10-10 and and being excited. Believe me, because I've done it both ways. I've been had boring fights where I just had to win it, and I do whatever I had to do to win and try not to lose. I've had ones where I'm like, fuck it, I was going to throw and see what happens, and got knocked out, and they're like, okay, that, that ruined everything. Like, it ruined my career. It didn't do anything for me. So there's that mix you got to find. So don't worry about being boring. Worry about winning, and then the rest of it will handle itself. When when you fight coming overseas now, you're coming all the way over to uh, uh, Alabama for this, for this huge, for us, it's a huge epic fight. Uh, the, the, the four title fights for Titan and and the ability to, to what, what Lex and those guys are doing with the fight. How difficult is it for you now? Because a lot of your fights have been kind of by home. Your People can travel, your friends can travel, your family can travel to see you fight. It's tough for them to get over to Alabama. Uh, is, is it going to be a little bit different for you not having that many fans and friends in the audience? Um, b- before any fight, really, I've had a lot of fans. Believe it or not, I've had 15 fights all in Wales. I haven't even been to England to fight. It's all in Wales. Um, I have slept in my bed every single night before before a fight. So yeah, going in this, going to Alabama, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. You know, I've never been to a fighters hotel. I've never done that before. Um, but yeah, I, it's gonna. I, I'm gonna go out there as long as that crowd's making noise. It's not gonna bother me. At the end of the day, like so many fighters think the same as me. Some some probably don't. When I'm just about a fight, I'm um, I feel I fear for my life. I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I fear I feel like the, this guy's gonna gonna kill me. He's he's gonna try and kill me, yeah. and I've got to do something before he does that to me. And um, before I go out, I cry. The last, especially the last couple of fights, I cry before I even go out to the octagon. It kind of like it kind of gets to me before I get there. And people say, "Oh, is that really? Is that why is I seem to perform better?" If yeah. you watch my, um, my my fight with Hagstrom, uh, before the fight even started, uh, I think Joe Martinez, the MC at the, uh, yeah. who was doing the who was doing the, the announcing, uh, was calling my name. And I had completely lost the plot by that point. I started screaming in the middle of the cage, and just it was hard for me to hold my anger there. If you can watch that fight on YouTube, uh, 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 Brett Jones versus David Hagstrom, Cage Wise Fifty Nine, uh, and I just lose the plot before the fight even started. You know, I, but. It, it doesn't take over me. I don't run. I don't run and then blitz them. You know, I yeah. take my time when I get there. It's a fight, but it's not going to matter. Before every fight, I'm like that. So going out there, it doesn't matter if, if the crowd is going to boo me or, or cheer me. My game face is on, and I'm, I'm ready to go. It's time to work. That's great. Every fighter has a different way. I used to throw up before every fight. Yeah, you know, I get get the call to go. Hey, it's time to go walk. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> just yeah. And, Yak it out and go, okay, good to go, let's go. You know, now I'm happy. It's Everyone's got their own little way, and it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I don't care what, what the fans say at home. A lot of fans that say at home, a lot of the, the manly men that sit on behind the computer screen and, and talk about us but don't do what we do, uh, we'll talk about how much of a pussy we are because we cry before a fight or, or how emotional we get after a big win and, you know, uh, after a big loss, we're crying, walking to the back. You don't never had that experience, so you don't understand, but sometimes with a big loss, you're walking back and the emotion hits you before you even get back to the locker room. And it's like, we're humans. This is what happens. We put a, we put not just physical into this. This is, like you said, you're living on a couch. You're bouncing from home to home. You don't have a car. You've got to win this fight. There's a lot of emotion attached to that. There's a, a lot of things that, that are going to dump out before you. So if you cry before a fight, 
Perfect. As long as that's the best, that's, that's the best way for you to get ready for your fight. That works. Works good for me too. I like it. Yeah. All right, Brett. Thanks so much for coming on here, man. It was great talking to you again. I'm so happy that you're with Titan, and I'm super excited that you're a sucker punch. I had no idea. I wish I had talked to Brian about that before. It's uh, that's really really good. Um, I can't wait. I, I think that I'm gonna be in town for that fight. I think I'm gonna come down um, for that one. So I'm gonna see you after. I won't bother you before, but we'll talk after. Oh, uh, exactly. it'll be great. To, it'll be great to see you again in Alabama, where even we have a hard time in America understanding the accent in Alabama. So it's going to be fun to watch you interact with other Alabamians to see how it works out. I think I'm going to have to have an interpreter, uh, interpreter there. Just uh, doing sign language and different stuff. Tell me what I'm talking about. You might have to. You might. Thanks, Brett, so much, man. Have a great rest of the night. We'll talk to you later. Hey, Frank, nice to speak to you. We'll see you soon.